One in 5,000 boys are born with Duchenne. It is a serious genetic defect which causes continuous and irreversible damage to muscle tissue. Duchenne is mostly diagnosed when children are around four or five years old. The first signs are that motor development is delayed and the child trips frequently. The muscle loss is progressive. Patients end up in a wheelchair and will eventually need assisted ventilation. Their life expectancy is around 30 years. Duchenne is a rare genetic disease, but that makes it less attractive for pharmaceutical industries to become involved. However, the disease has a huge impact on the patients, but also on their families. Parents have formed very strong and influential organizations. Over the years, they have collected millions of euros for research. 15 years ago, the Dutch Duchenne Parent Project was the first to fund the Duchenne Research at Leiden University Medical Center, and they are still funding it today. I feel privileged to work so closely together with patient organizations because in the end, the therapy we develop is for them. Duchenne patients cannot make the protein dystrophin, and dystrophin normally provides stability to muscles when you use them. And because in Duchenne patients this protein is missing, the muscles are very sensitive to damage. So there's muscle damage whenever these patients use their muscle and eventually they lose their muscle tissue and therefore also their muscle function. The dystrophin protein is translated from the dystrophin gene. And the dystrophin gene is in fact a huge gene. It's the largest gene in the human genome. It's 100 times larger than the average gene. Um, and what happens in Duchenne patients is that there is an error in the gene and that makes the gene unreadable. So the beginning of the protein is made and then the gene becomes unreadable and protein translation stops. The resulting protein is not functional and unstable. What's interesting is that there's also other patients who have errors in the dystrophin gene, but who have a milder disease. This disease is called Becker muscular dystrophy. And these patients have an, an error in the gene that doesn't affect the readability. So the protein translation can continue until the end. The protein is slightly different than a normal protein, but it is partially functional. And therefore these patients have a slower disease progression. And what we thought with our therapy is, can't we play sort of hide and seek with the gene and hide the error in Duchenne patients in such a way that the code becomes readable again. We started 15 years ago at very basic with cultured cells from patients and we could show that after we treated these cells from patients with our compounds that they started to make dystrophin again. And there was a lot of further development, but we also found a pharmaceutical company that wanted to partner with us. And they are now developing the, the compound further. They've done clinical trials and they are now actually applying uh, for market authorization with the Food and Drug Administration in the US and with the European Medicine Agency in Europe to get market approval for, for one of these compounds. If this compound would be approved, that would be a huge step. However, if we want to treat larger groups of patients, we would need to develop more compounds. Another thing is that our therapy only slows down disease progression, which is a big step, but it will not restore muscle tissue that's already lost when we start treatment. So there's still a lot of work ahead of us, and I'm very dedicated and motivated to keep working on this and to hopefully improve the therapy even more. Thank <laughs> you.